With the introduction of Master Mode in Terraria's 1.4 update, Journey's End, we find ourselves in a whole new world of pain. Master Mode is essentially Expert Mode, but every single mob wants to kill you. And every single mob is bigger, stronger, faster, harder, and essentially built by the same people who made Robocop. With that in mind, here are 5 tips and tricks you can do to master early game master mode Terraria and get yourself well on the way to killing the first, well, second boss, the Eye of Cthulhu. First on the list is mining and exploration. Now in master mode, everything is quicker and hits you harder. So, being able to mine and explore efficiently is very important. Normally, you'd just jump straight into a cave, mine everything you can, spend a couple of hours down there, and basically come back with insanely large amounts of resources. I recommend against this in Master Mode Terraria. How the game works is mobs will spawn off screen and then work their way on screen. Now with normal, that's okay, you can kill these mobs and carry on going. In Master Mode, the health pool of the mobs is so high that by the time you have killed one mob, the second mob will already be on the screen blocking your exit path. So what I advise here is, instead of stopping to mine everything, you go into caves, you pick up only what you need, which is either lead or iron, depending on your spawn, or gold or platinum, again, depending on your spawn. Both of which are incredibly useful for making potions, which we will cover later on. And secondly, when it comes to exploration, always fully explore the top layer as much as you can. You want to find a desert biome, if at all possible, you know, without going through a corruption. And you basically want to take as much cactus as possible and make a full set of cactus armor. The cactus armor itself, each piece provides one defense. The set will provide you with an additional defense, giving you a total of four defense. The way Terraria's attack system works is basically it's a percentile thing, so the more armor you have, the less damage you take, as you do with most games. Now having four times the armor, means you will probably take a lot less damage, it won't be four times less damage, but you'll take a considerable amount of less damage, allowing you to survive longer and explore further. Another step that you should never be afraid to do is actually going into the corruption. At some point you will get bombs and have a bomb, uh, I think it's an ex a demolitions expert move in. Then you want to go to the corruption, build a rope all the way down and the orbs on the bottom, throw bombs at the ebonstone blocks to destroy them, and blow up the orbs and the chances are you will pick up a musket which is an incredibly powerful early game weapon increasing your survivability massively and helping out when it comes to killing all mobs around you especially in the corruption you can destroy up to two of these orbs so if you don't get it on your first time the chances are you will get it on your second time something that is overlooked by a lot of terraria players is herb growing and potions potions are incredibly powerful and insanely useful to have on hand so, number two is how to keep on top of herbs and potions which allow you to survive more. To start off with potions, you need to have a crafting bench. Once you've got a crafting bench, just place it anywhere, it really doesn't matter. Head into the desert biome where you went to get your cactus armor and farm a little bit of sand. I'd recommend taking some bombs in there and just blowing the hell out the top layer, collecting about 200 sand and taking this back to your furnace. Turn the sand into glass and then that glass into bottles. Once you've got your bottles, make sure to place one of those bottles on top of your crafting bench and this will also make it an alchemy station. The remainder of your bottles you'll want to take to the closest water source you've got and turn it into bottle of water. Any potion you make will require a bottle of water as the foundation to it, as well as other materials as well. Once you've got those, head back and just dump it all into a chest nearby. Next, I'd recommend going down mining some clay. Take this clay back to your furnace, make it into clay pots. Around 20 should do. Place clay pots onto a platform or any other surface that you want to have on there, and these are what we grow in seeds in. Next, you want to go out and find a day bloom or two, break them, get the day bloom seeds. Same with the blink root, which can be found in caves. Go get blink root and blink root seeds. Plant these seeds into the pots, and that will keep on top of your day bloom and blink root production. This means you will never have to go out and explore and find Daybloom and Blink Root for whenever you want to make potions. Next comes while you are mining. As before, I said that the two key elements were lead or iron and gold or platinum. Lead allows you to make an iron skin potion and platinum allows you to make a spelunking potion. So you want to keep these in their ore form and just split a little bit off into your herbing chest so that you can make iron skin and spelunking potions whenever you want. Iron skin increases your defense by 8, reducing the damage you take massively. 
and spelunking potions allow you to see all the ores currently on screen, even those hidden behind walls that you haven't broken yet, which is incredibly useful when you're trying to get your early game hook, like with rubies or emeralds or anything like that. It makes it so much easier to find resources you need and will be invaluable in future. By keeping on top of your alchemy, you should have archery, iron skin and regeneration potions available at all times, making early game progression much easier. Something that should not be looked over in early game Terraria is fishing. Fishing is incredibly useful for getting resources and fish and a, and a steady food source essentially. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to collect a little bit of lead in a mine and you're going to want to make yourself a reinforced fishing pole. Once you've got your reinforced fishing pole, you want to go to the merchant, who by this point should have moved in if you've been smashing enough pots and getting enough um, silver to, to allow him, and you've got an available room. Go to the merchant and buy the bug net. Take your bug net out into the wilderness and destroy heaps of like dirt and bushes and things that you can see on the surface, which will spawn worms. Use your bug net to collect the worms. These are bait for your fishing rod. Then take your fishing rod down into a cave, find a large body of water and block yourself off and start fishing. The larger the body of water, the higher chance you've got of fishing up something useful. The smaller the body of water, the more chance you've got of fishing up seaweed, tin cans and old shoes, which let's be fair, no one wants. While you're fishing, you will mainly get bass and specular fish. These are useful as much as it doesn't look like they are because you can take these to a cooking pot and turn these into seafood dinners, which gives you a minor or a major improvement to all stats based on whichever one you cook. Other things you can get from fishing as something called an armored cave fish. Now this is incredibly useful. When combined with a blink root and a day bloom, it makes a potion that reduces all damage you take by 10%. That is a flat out reduction of 10%. So say you were fighting the Eye of Cthulhu and he was going to hit you for 60, that is immediately reduced to 54 before anything else has happened, before your arm is taken into consideration or anything. That is one of the most useful potions in the game and is well worth fishing. Other things you can get from there are wooden crates and iron crates. Wooden crates and iron crates can contain anything from potions to accessories which allow you to double jump. These are insanely useful in getting gold as well. You can sit down there and farm for maybe an hour if you wanted to, wouldn't recommend it, but you could come back up with nearly a platinum's worth of gold. Really good for early game money, really good for early game resources, and insanely powerful for early game survival. I would recommend fishing any day of the week. Number four on the list are the stars that drop from the sky. Now, in order to collect the stars that drop from the sky, I would recommend creating a very long wooden platform above your base. As you can see in the video here, it's exactly what I did. This is going to be a multi-purpose platform. Essentially, this is where you're going to be fighting your bosses on as well. You can develop this as you go along and make it better. But having this platform above your base, not too high, because if you don't want to fall off and die, allows you to collect stars really quickly. Now, when it comes to actually collecting the stars, it is very tempting to make those into mana crystals, which increase your mana, allowing you to cap out your mana. Hold off on that in the early game. You want to be using these stars to make jester arrows. Now, jester arrows are insanely, insanely useful in early game progression. They penetrate the enemy that they're fired at and go through all the enemies behind as well. So say you've got four or five zombies coming at you and you need to escape quickly. You can fire these jester arrows and it will kill all five of them at the same time, essentially quintupling your DPS on the creatures. And the Jester Arrows become even more useful when you're fighting the first boss, the King Slime, as he spawns slimes and dangerous spiky slimes, which you can shoot Jester Arrows at, which will penetrate through them and clean out the entire platform insanely quickly. So, my number four tip, when it comes to stars, do not use them for mana crystals, turn them into Jester Arrows and use them as a weapon against your enemy, because they are amazing. Number 5 on my list of tips and tricks for early game Terraria is the King Slime. To spawn in the King Slime you need 5 gold or platinum bars, 1 ruby and 20 gel. You make the gold or platinum bars and the ruby into a gold or platinum crown. You take this crown to a demon altar and use your gel to turn it into a slime crown. This slime crown allows you to summon in the King Slime wherever and whenever you want. To fight this guy, I recommend using an Iron Skin Potion, a Regeneration Potion, an Archery Potion, having Hermes Boots and a Hook, and using your Star Platform, all in order to survive. 
just before you spawn in the King Slime, click B on your keyboard. This is a shortcut which allows you to drink all your potions and eat all your food in one go so you don't have to go through individually and click them all. Make sure your boss fighting platform has campfires scattered all along it. This increases your health regeneration and make sure that your potions are not on cooldown. Your health potions are not on cooldown before you fight this guy. Once you've prepped, click on the King Slime and spawn him in. The fight itself is fairly easy. He just jumps around trying to get on top of you and will occasionally teleport around the map. If you stay on your platform, when you're on your platform, he will teleport up to you. This is when you need to be focusing on the King Slime. Shoot him as much as he is chasing you, staying close as this allows you to get a better shot off. He will then teleport away, more than likely down to the ground because he thinks he can reach you down there, but hopefully your platform is high enough that even when he jumps, he can't. While he's not on the platform, you need to use your Jester arrows to clear off the platform of all the slimes that are there currently, as these can kill you very, very quickly. He will then teleport back up to you and just keep hopping after you. If you are running out of platform space, wait till he does a large hop, run underneath him and start going the other way, clearing any slimes with your Jester arrows that you need to clear out of your way. Once you've done this, just keep rinsing and repeating the tactics. As his health gets lower, he gets slightly faster, which is why your platform needs to be quite long, but it doesn't essentially get any harder. It may take a few minutes to kill him with just a straight up musket, but you will eventually kill him. Now the King Slime's loot is insanely powerful, so pick up the treasure bag once he's dead and right click on it. You will probably have a royal gel in there, which has the words, all slimes become friendly. This is the best accessory you can get for early game master mode. This means that any slime you encounter, be it on the surface, in the cave, or even in hell, cannot hurt you. They cannot hurt you, you can stand in them and not take any damage at all. This will make it so much easier when you are exploring to survive. It's insane. It's ridiculous. On top of this, the King Slime drops ninja gear. He only drops two out of three pieces every time you kill him. But this is also insanely useful. Your cactus gear only gives you four armor. Ninja gear gives you a total of eight overall. Additionally, he has a chance to drop a little pet, which is cool. A slime hook, which is as good as probably one of the hooks you've already got, which I'm assuming you're already using a hook and has a chance to drop a mount. The mount itself is really good, it allows you to jump insanely high, and if you've got cloud in a bottle, allows you to double jump, allowing maneuverability around the map to be considerably easier. He also will drop something called a solidifier. They allow you to make gel building blocks, but they do sell for two and a half gold. I would recommend summoning in the King Slime at least four or five times and just saving up enough gold from farming him to get the minigun from the arms dealer. Once you've got the minigun from the arms dealer, you are set to take on the Eye of Cthulhu and your early game is coming swiftly to an end. That's it for my tips and tricks for surviving early game Terraria. If you enjoyed this, if it was at all useful, please drop me a like, drop me a subscribe, you know, it's insanely useful for me and um, I will see you in the next episode. So thank you very much.